about five months, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. My name's Dawn. I'm actually the local history librarian here at the library, and I do the programs. Um, I have some, some housework, so to speak, before we get started. Um, I started a new email list, and I, and I sent out an email at the end of last month, and I heard from a lot of people that didn't get one. Did anybody in here get my email? You did. You did. Okay. If you did not get my email, um, please sign up again. I don't know why you didn't. Uh, I did have three or four bounce back, so just put it in there with Kelly. I'm only doing one month, and hopefully, I don't know when it is. Just be sure to check the junk email. So, and for those of you who don't know, if you want to sign up, I'm sending out emails once at the beginning of the month, and it's going to have all the local Colorado programs, the Steve Belt programs, and Esther Bones programs. So that way you don't have to watch the website or anything. It'll, it'll just be there. Okay. Oh, something I've never said before. Usually we get done before we close. And if you've never been in our library, it's a beautiful library. And not only do we have books, we have DVDs, we have uh, books on tape. And something new, maybe you can do the book, or you do e-books or iBooks, you can download them now from our website. It's very exciting. You can go to our website and find out the information about it. So just wanted to let everybody know about that. And our next program is going to be Au Pairs, Grill and Pub. They will be here November 16th. And they're going to be doing Rubens and coleslaw. So they're letting some of their secrets out. And if you didn't get the, the recipes before you leave, please do. Federico's, they've done a bang up job tonight. I was amazed at the amount of food that they brought. So thank you so much. And also, we will be filming tonight. I'm going to be your camera woman, just so you know. And we'll just be shooting the food. But if you can kind of watch for me and walk behind me, we appreciate that. And so. No further ado. Okay, gentlemen, whenever you're ready. Hey, hey guys, my name is Freddie from Federico's Mexican Food here in Rio Rancho. And I'm Jacob from CritiqueReview.com. And as most of you guys know, my job for a living is to cook Mexican food. My job is to critique people, places, and things. And today, we're going to be showing you guys one of our homemade secret recipes or the coldest chattels. What does it include and what is uh, involved with the recipe? Well, it's a combination of things, but frijoles chattels means uh, cowboy beans. And this is something that usually they eat like during, you know, when they're out with cattle or something, they cook something up good. And basically, it, it has a lot of different ingredients in it. Let me just read up some of the list. I know you guys got this list. Um, you, got, you have to put bacon in it, it has bacon, green pickle, jalapeno, ham, Chorizo, beans, cilantro, and of course it's salt and pepper. And it's one of my favorite ones. It's really easy to cook, guys. Really easy. Um, one of the, the first, of course, got to start with the beans. And you, you boil and cook the beans for a while. Um, you have to cook everything separate. I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, there wasn't a lot of grease on them because we cooked everything separate. We dried the, the grease off the ham, off the chorizo, and have to bake it around, so that stuff will be really greasy. So you just get all that stuff out of there and you get that taste where you can actually taste the individual uh, meats and stuff in there. Um, as far as that, anybody have any questions on, on that one so far? I mean, that seems to be pretty popular. So, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Sir? Yeah. How much time do you go through the it really depends. Like you want to cook them until they're soft enough to your liking. Some people like them extremely soft, so you let them down. And it's a good idea to triple wash the beans. That's a good idea. It gives them that nice white color. So you triple wash them. Make sure you you know when you set them, um, you have to put them in warm water and let them sit for a while. And that's one of the tricks to get them nice and soft. Once you turn that out, you can go ahead and wash them a couple times again, and then cook it until your desired uh, texture of the beans. Usually they're pretty soft, as you notice. There's some little grease kind of soft um, to it. And the bacon, when you cook the bacon, you gotta get the bacon crispy. That's the trick to it, or else the bacon's not gonna come out the way it came out right here. And um, my wife and my mom are the ones that actually taught me how to cook that guy. So it's not, I mean, I know I'm taking all the credit up here, but <laughs> <laughs> what it's not. And um, me and Jake were talking about the different names that, that the Frijoles Chavos have in it. And one of the ones, uh, the most common one right now that people use for it, these borracho beans. What's borracho bean mean? Borracho beans means like drunken beans. Drunken beans, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not like that, not like that. But, I like that one time. 
Yeah, I don't have that one tiny hand. <laughs> no, but that's what they're most commonly known by. And they're really good, have a pool of protein, some of the stuff they use on it, like cilantro, jalapeno, beans, all fresh ingredients, so it, it, it's really good. They really taste even better when you recook them the next day. That's what, that's how good it is. It's like a new though. You cook it the next day, for some reason it just tastes better. So I, I, I don't know. It tastes really good the first time. Yeah, it tastes good the first time. That dollar is definitely good. Definitely, that first is definitely uh, good. And that's, that's one of the things, that's the most popular thing that, that we uh, are, are bringing to you guys um, to cook. Um, Something new and exciting also. It's not just the same yeah. things you see. Uh, yeah, has anybody else heard about uh, Frijoles Chavos before? Or anybody tasted this similar before? You yeah, have? Wonderful. Was it similar to what we're doing here? Good, good, good. So she's happy with it. Yes, sir? Uh, myself, uh, you were saying that you put uh, the jalapenos in there. Myself, I can't really uh, have jalapenos, but would like a regular uh, green chilies work just to Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, you definitely so, can. You can use green chili and you can take anything out. I know some people don't like ham or some people don't like, you can definitely take anything out and just follow the basic directions. Uh, what we wanted to do actually, we didn't get a, 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 a chance because we got the Rumble and Rio that we're helping sponsor this weekend, guys. Just to throw that in there, Saturday night. Rumble and Rio, I don't know if you guys uh, heard about that, but it's a police, it's a charity event that we do every year for the police. These uh, the police police fire firefighters, and they box and stuff, and we raise money to buy kids for poor kids of New Mexico. Uh, last couple of years, we raised like thirty, fifty thousand dollars. We buy them bicycles during the year. Yeah, we buy them bicycles during the year and stuff. So that's Saturday night at the Santa Star Casino, seven o'clock. If anybody can make it, I had nothing to do with food, but yes, sir. Um, when we uh, cook our beans, we uh, put them in a presto cooker. Oh, yeah. Could you put all the rest of the meats in there as well, or do you want to put that in? You can. Like, well, once you have your beans cooked in the pressure cooker, you want to kind of add each item individually. You don't want to add a all at one time. Usually you want to add like the jalapeno or the green chili or the cilantro at the end. Because that, that you know, doesn't get that much soggy and stuff. So at first you start adding like, the beans are going to be first, you can add the... Um, well, you could add or take away any ingredients. So yeah. sometimes it's good to add it, maybe taste it. See how it's setting and then go from there. Decide if you want to add more, add less. Same with the spices, the salt and peppers, and all that stuff. You have to be careful with the salt sometimes because uh, <laughs> the the meats themselves will be a little salty. So if you add too much salt to begin with and then you add the meats, you end up with a lot of salt in the or yeah, a lot of salt taste in the end. You bring up a good point, yeah. yeah. So the beans, I mean the ham and the chorizo and all that, it usually has salt content already in it. So when you're starting to cook them, put less salt than you desire because when the time you get there, at the end, you have to taste it. Once you get all the ingredients in, you leave them for about three minutes and then you, you, you just kind of stir it and then taste it. And if you think that it needs more salt, you can go ahead and add more salt to it or anything. Some people like to add pepper, a little bit of garlic, um, anything that you basically want to add to. But that's the basic way that you can make it. And people call them different names. I've heard, you know, beef stew, I mean bean stew. Um, borracho beans is one of them, his favorite one, but you know, there's there's different ones that, that they call them. So, yes, ma'am. Could you add fresh jalapenos as opposed to You could, ones? you could, yeah, and that's the beauty of these because you can have pretty much whatever you like to it. Towards the end, and it will just get warm, you won't overcook it. Because once you have the beans and all the meats cooked, you can add a, a lot of people have pieces of potato, they add a little bit of carrot, I think we had a little bit of carrot in that one also. But you can add whatever you like, and it turns out pretty well, pretty well. And um, we have plenty extra, so after this, you guys can definitely um, take some extra one with you guys. It's really healthy also, like Fred was saying earlier, it's really high in protein and fiber, along yeah. with um, a lot of minerals and vitamins that it has in it. So if you're sick or you're feeling sick, it's, you could eat something like that, and it helps your, boost your immune system, gives you those vitamins you guys need. Yeah, that's a good point. We all need so. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, you get your whole meal in one of those bowls right there, so that's good. Uh, any other questions on that? I know we're going to move on to talk about the guacamole. So any, any other uh, any other questions you want to come up and now or come up at, at the end of the show? Yes, ma'am. Does that freeze well? It, it does. It does. You can actually you can actually freeze it pretty good as long as the, you try not to add so much vegetables on it. Vegetables sometimes don't freeze very well, but but if you add just the meat and stuff like that on it. It should be fine, and then put it in the microwave, it should be, should be good. One of the major problems we're finding right now is once we cook it, it doesn't last long enough to freeze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not with me around. <laughs> you know, any of us. You gotta eat your own food, and I'm, I'm, you can tell I, I love my food. 
<laughs> yes, ma'am. I was wondering about the chorizo. Yeah. What kind of, what kind of chorizo is it used for? Well, on that one we used the beef chorizo, but no, you can use pork chorizo and... Is that more like a hot dog? No, well we did use hot dogs on there, we used the beef, beef hot dogs on that one, we also used chorizo. Um, chorizo has more spice. Yeah, it's a, little, it's a little bit more spicy, it gives it that thickness of it almost, that flavoring. Uh, but we did use a beef chorizo, and you can, you can buy it at the Rio Rancho Meats, they have it. Uh, yeah. Does the chorizo come in, uh, is it like a hot dog, or, or is it blue? Yeah, there, there's two different kinds. There's actually one that, that looks like a link, like a hot dog link, you know, and it's tied up, and that, you can use that one. That one's pretty good as well. And there's also some, like if you go to like a shop, like uh, your rancho meat and this keep market, they'll have it by the pound or something. So you can just get, yeah, you don't even have a pound of tree sauce. Because you don't need that much of that stuff. That stuff, when you put it in the, in the stew, you can taste it, but you probably won't see it in there. It's just swimming in there with all the rest of the And the amount for the ingredients that we gave you is actually to cook a big pot. And now I want to just cut everything in portions. Yeah, just cut it in portions if you like and, and make it, uh, if you want to add more, you want to do that. Um, we're going to move on with that, unless anybody has any other questions with the beans. Okay. We're going to move on to guacamole. Right. Um, we use house avocados because you get the best quality and you get more actual avocado than if you do. I know sometimes you go to the store and you have these big ones and you have a little one that's really cheap. You know, this one's a little more expensive. But you're going to get more guacamole out of this one than this one. Gonna, it's going to be about the same. And the reason why we use Haas avocado, it has a lot of protein, a lot of nutrients. This stuff is like good for you. You know, I, I was mentioning a lot of, it has over 20 vitamins and minerals. Yeah. So I was surprised when he told me that it had 20 vitamins and minerals. I was like, really? Avocado? Oh, I was like, it's man. It's tough, you know? Absolutely. But, but he says, you know, I believe. And, uh, so yeah, I, I told them I know a lot of people use it for their for their skin, you know, because it soothes out the skin, makes it smooth and stuff. A lot of nutrients in it. Too. And he's like, yeah, because it's nutrients and vitamins in it. I was like, well, that gives me an idea when I get home, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm not. When he's eating those burrata beans. Yeah, I'll let, yeah, I'll let my wife worry about that yeah. stuff. Um, the way we like to make it, I know that, you know, it's everybody makes welcome. That's like the most common thing that everybody makes. But there's key ingredients that people miss out, like, one of the best ingredients that people miss out? Lemon. Lemon. A lot of people don't think, oh, you know what, I'm going to use lemon on the, on the guacamole. But you know what? This, it kind of neutralizes the guacamole taste and it gives it that long-lasting effect in your, your taste buds. That it's just hard to explain until you taste it. But it makes so, your taste buds happy. Yeah, and, and you, as you can tell, like, there's a difference between other, other avocados. It's the color. You know, you gotta get that nice, bright, shiny color. If you don't have that, you might as well say, you know what, I'm gonna eat one of it's not gonna taste so good. You know, or give your belly. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it's good. And sometimes uh, a lot of uh, the stores, you know, just a little bit will be bad and the rest of the avocado will be good. You can definitely cut that out, you know, I know you can cut that out. Because even a little bit of dark spot of avocado will make your guacamole taste better. Even a little tiny bit. Like we sit there in our restaurant, and we, you know, we want to find some that are bad, and we sit there, we, we cut them out because we know it's not going to last for that long. Especially if you want to put it away, you know, it's not going to last for that long if, if you uh, have any that's not green. Yes, sir. Anything on the outside of the avocado that tips you off that you're going to have some bad in it? You might. If it's a little hard shell, like if it's a little hard on it, you know, or if it has a little white stuff, it's starting to get a, like a little discoloring on it. That that could be also be, or if they're too dark on the outside. Like if they're too dark on the outside, then you know that they've been ready to go for a while now. Usually that's when they sell them for like three for a dollar. <laughs> you know, before then they're one a dollar now, you know, they're like a dollar each or something. So it's, 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 it gets expensive. Adding the lemon will also help preserve it if you need it. Yeah. More than you're going to use at night. Yeah, you can definitely. And a lot of people don't uh, add um, jalapenos to it. I don't like it. I don't like to add a little kick to it. I, I love it. I know you jump in said to add green chili. I love it with green chili too. You know, you gotta try to play around and, and put different ingredients in there that, that will give your taste but something different. You, you know, you come over and when your friends eat them one at a time and or they eat beans all the time, and they come over and they see borracho beans standing on your on your door and you tell them, what are those? Oh, those are borracho beans. <laughs> <laughs> are those okay to eat? <laughs> all right, you know. Depends who made them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to use any, any real borracho stuff on them. I mean, is it? They're really good, especially when you have no part.
party. You guys have a party that are great. People Football season. It. Football season. Charger fans, here I go, but just to throw that out there, I know we're talking about food. But they're great for football. Great. Usually your team wins if you make something so good like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> but yeah, and you know, we use tomato, we also use onion, um, on them. The tomatoes, a lot of people, when you open up a tomato, you see, you know, something has a little bit of juice on it, right? You want to get as much of that juice out of it, as much as you can. And no seeds as well if you can. Try to get all the seeds out because that will make your guacamole like, cre like, like creamy and it'll start making it watery over time and it won't last as long. So if you want to just have just pure skin, pure, pure tomato skin, pure jalapeno skin, pure avocado skin, nice and green, you guys are going to have some good guacamole like the one over there and um, great. Sunday night. Any any questions? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Could you use lime too, or just? Lime? Yeah, you can actually use lime as well. Yeah, yeah. You probably got to use two or three limes. We usually only use one for a lot of batch like that, but a lime you probably got to use two of them just to get enough uh, juice out of them. So, but they're actually really good with lime. Any other questions, guys? What what more? Yes, I mean, I'm a That one, I want to say. Uh, you know, I, to be honest, I don't. Remember, I know that we use a box, and box has about 38 to 48 count, and we make a, bu a 32, uh, 32 uh, bucket, 32 pounds. Yeah, 32 pound bucket. Pound? Yeah. 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 The thing is a five, yeah, five gallon tub of one more with a box of one pound. Yeah, the five gallon tub, for sure. <laughs> so, and that's how much you, when you make a box and then you put some tomatoes in there. But if you're making like, you know, a little plate, a little plate like that, you know. And, and, and it's kind of like the texture, you want to have that creamy texture, but you also want to have some bite into it. You, you want to have little chunks of avocado, little onions that you can taste, the jalapeno that you can taste. But not necessarily the seeds or the Yeah, the no, not, not the juice. Yeah, as you can see, this will kind of, I'm going to try to do this, but this is kind of stick to the plate. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm not going to but, but it does stick to the plate because it, it sticks to your chips, whatever you dip it on. Like roll tacos, I love to dip roll tacos into the guacamole, you know, I just, and the spicier the better for me, but that's just me. And you can use all kinds of stuff, you know, all kinds of chili, you know, green chili. Uh, I even see people that make a red, they put like red uh, pepper, dried peppers on there, and put them on there, and it tastes pretty good. So people have all kinds of combinations for guacamole. Any other questions, guys? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, do uh, avocados have a season where they're better or are they better? Yeah, usually I believe that they, they're like a summer, uh, a summer thing. But it takes a really long time to grow avocado. I know that um, I grew up in an avocado grove, and you would see an avocado, and it would take years for the avocado just to, or that avocado tree just to go to grow older. You know, avocados are so expensive sometimes. Right now, they're they're pretty decent. We're paying about twenty dollars um, a box of thirty, but it's gone up to like fifty-five, sixty dollars for the same box. So avocado doubles or triples when they're off season. And if it's a cold winter or if it's a cold summer, wherever these guys are at, you're looking at paying a lot of money. A dollar each one of these, better be some good guacamole. <laughs> so, so, yeah. All right, guys, any other questions on the, on the famous guacamole? All right. Where, where are your locations? Oh, that's a good thing you brought that up. We have four locations. Uh, the one here in Rancho was the first Federico's of all kind. Now there's about 18 or 19, but this was the first one. And um, I have family and friends that had different restaurants in Arizona and stuff. And we all became good friends because Federico's used nothing but Angus beef, Haas avocados, all this stuff. We won uh, awards like Best Restaurant in Upgrade Tribune for under $10. So you, for 10 bucks, you get to go to Federico's and eat the avocado and stuff. And because we don't try to overcharge you guys, you know, I don't drive a Lexus, I don't want to have this big house. You know, I live in Rio Rancho. Uh, all I want is to bring, provide good food, so I can get a paycheck. And that's pretty much it. And um, all the ingredients. This is the first one. It's right there in front. Intel and Kmart is. We're right next to Pizza Hut on the Kmart park line. I know a lot of people don't know here where we're at, but for those of you know, we're right there. Uh, the address is 1590 Deborah Road, and my second location is on Coors and Fortuna, and that's 640 Coors Boulevard. It's just past I-40 on Coors Boulevard across the street from West Mesa High School. And our other location, we have one on Huntable and Lomas, so if you're ever guys on the east side, there's one on Huntable and Lomas, and 
one in Zuni and some in Tampa. And there's some in Arizona as well. And like I said, that's how uh, we became 19 or 18 restaurant companies that we have. Because, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty keen into using Hasa Avocado, was making sure that I take no shortcuts because I want you guys to come back to the restaurant. I don't want you guys to go and charge you 20 bucks and then you never come back. I'd rather you go, get a nice decent meal for a good price, you can taste it, and I'll see you guys again. So, any, any other questions guys? We'd love to answer some more questions. There also, yes, if you grow in a avocado orchard, your approach to the food then is more California? Yes, I grew up in Southern California. And I actually grew up in a town, well, I'm from Vista, but I grew up in a town called Bonzo, California. And uh, in a Vestal's Ranch, they call it. It's called Vestal's Ranch, and they had an avocado grove. My dad, um, he was a um, horse specialist. He used to breed thoroughbreds. So we got, I was really privileged to grow up on a ranch in, in, in uh, San Diego, which was a beautiful place. And I had unlimited avocados, which was the best part of the deal. And, uh, I got to uh, uh, learn. Actually, our food is, is called California Mexican food. That's what, what the official name is it, you know, California Mexican food. I've made it a little bit better than back then, <laughs> but, you know, we're still, we're still doing great, and, and I really appreciate it, guys. I mean, we're doing four locations, we're looking for more, and, and we really owe it to the people of your Rancho. I'm really thankful for it. All you guys, thank you so much for coming. And any other questions? Yeah. Go for it. Where did yeah. your name Federico come from? Federico, that's my name and yeah. my dad's name. So I'm a junior. Is it Federico or Federico? Uh, Fe Federico with the F E D E R I C O. Okay. Federico. Okay. And I'm a junior. A lot of people call me Freddy, but my, uh, it was named really after my dad. You know, I help my dad and everything, and, and um, my dad, he doesn't play around either. You know, if he, if he wants good meat, you know, you. One of the delivery trucks shows up with uh, bad cucumbers. Hey, these cucumbers are not, I mean, they're still good, but they're not great. Take them back. Hey, these tomatoes are really squishy. Take them back. And that's, that's the reputation that we have tried to build here. And, and it's great. And I hope that in your kitchens, you guys can use the same thing and say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to try to use Hasso Avocado because I know that I'm probably going to spend more money throwing avocado away if I buy that cheaper one. You know, you got to look at that sometimes. Because you will save more money if you buy the decent quality stuff instead of trying to save money because it's oh yeah you get two for a dollar these are one for a dollar but you're gonna throw away half of the one that cost you two for a dollar so any other questions guys yes ma'am are most of your ingredients of your other foods as fresh as these are yes additives? yes everything is, is homemade we don't buy anything made or chili or you know just made in the house um, the only thing that tamales is made in house, everything, the beans, rice, and noodle. The only thing that's made um, outside the house is our tortillas, and they're hand, hand stretched. And there would be no way I can make that many tortillas in, in, in the restaurant. So, <laughs> so we have a special special design for us. And we also have um, a special meat company, like Rancho Meats, that does some of our chorizo and alubada. And it's a special recipe that we supply to them, and then they make it to us. But everything's made in house, everything with fresh produce. Um, and that's, you know, I, I, I insist on that. I insist on the other Federicos as well. If one of the Federicos doesn't do it, they would have to change their name. Because, you know, if you expect to walk into McDonald's, you expect to get the same good um, um, quality, quality as, as another one. And a lot of Hispanic places, I mean, I don't want to, a lot of restaurants, in period, especially if they're not a big name brand, will try to save money by using cheaper quality meat. I know a lot of, we use Angus beef, but I know a lot of places don't use Angus beef. Like they'll go with uh, old dairy cow meat because it's a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. But you try not to use that because you're gonna taste the difference. And like I said, once you taste something that you don't like, you're like, hey, wait a minute, this was good before, what happened? She just meat or something? That's one of the things I found out the other day is all their meat gets cut pretty much that day or the, yeah. within like a day or two. Yeah. And a lot of companies, they buy meat, it's been you know, cut for a week or two weeks. Yeah, and they freeze it or something and then they wait to the, yes. There's a lot of no, we have some of the stuff that comes from Cisco, Cisco Foods, and some of the others. Well, actually, just meat right now just comes from Cisco Meats and from Rear Ranch Show Meats. And there's only two places that we have meat from it. And we buy up, like ingredients right now, we're buying it from a company called, um, I think it's Rosales, uh, Rosales Distributed or something like that. And they're, they're a vegetable company, and they have really good products. I believe they also sell to Rear Ranch Public Schools. I'm not 100% sure on that. Any other questions, guys? Yes, you know, the best taco on the planet. <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you. I've been on the other end of town. I've been driven a long way. Thank you. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, yeah. we have Taco Tuesday. Oh, Taco Tuesday. We have tacos for a dollar up every Tuesday, guys. And I, re I recommend you guys call your order in because Tuesday, I, I, I'm not kidding, we sell hundreds of tacos an hour. So you gotta call your order in, especially during lunchtime. If you, wanna, if you want tacos during lunchtime for the special, call it. Uh, we do beef tacos, chicken tacos, and ground beef tacos for a dollar on Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights? Well, no, Tuesday all day. Tuesday all day. So what number do you call at Deborah? Uh, it is 891-7218. <laughs> yes, yes we do. Yes we do. We have we, we use three different kinds of tortillas. We use our big famous uh, 14 inch flour ones, and these are all hand stretched. And we also use our six inch corn tortilla for tacos and stuff like that. We also have a four inch mini tortilla that we use, and that's for like mini tacos with the onions and cilantro on them. Yeah, good. yeah, those are pretty good. And my favorite. You can get an order of those for two ninety nine. So those are all special all the time. Um, yes, ma'am. Do you serve breakfast? Yes, we do. We have really great breakfast burritos. That's one of our most busiest times of the day as well. So, uh, especially during the weekend, if you guys want to, you know, order a big order, it's, it's recommended you guys call ahead. Especially what, the weekend. What's in a breakfast burrito? Um, we have different ones. Like we got bacon burrito, sausage burrito, ham burrito, chorizo burrito. Most of them come with chorizo. I mean, uh, ham, egg, and cheese, or bacon, egg, and cheese. You can add potatoes to your preference, uh, red or green chili added to your preference as well. On the weekends, we got menudo, and that's really popular. Menudo Saturday and Sunday. And that is, is I'm not saying complicated to, to, uh, to make, it just takes a really long time. I would have tried to done that for you guys, but it would have taken me like seven hours. <laughs> it would have just taken me so long. So, so we did that one. Uh, but menudo is really popular for us on Saturday and Sunday. And if you want to, we make it for about 300 people. You know, huge, huge pot, but you need to get there early, like around noon. You, yeah, yeah. If you get there, if you get in the afternoon, why you do though? You're probably out of luck. You know, you gotta go somewhere where they make it, um, or in a can, or they make it every day. But it takes us a long time, and we, like I said, we use really great ingredients on the menu as well. We don't, we don't skimp out on it. Yes, sir. Is your menu uh, red chili based or white? Uh, red chili based. Red chili paste. And then we use, it's a little, like a little spicy, but we also have the spicy on the side, which I know a lot of people want their meat to go hot. You know, they want it spicy. I don't know what they were doing last the night before, you know, it was a party the night before, but a lot of people want their meat to go spicy. And we have that for them. We have a little powder stuff that we make, especially in And I do warn people, only one tablespoon. After that, it's uh, no warranty on it. <laughs> that's you guys. You know, that's you. I mean, I see people, they, they're like, oh, I'm not afraid of this. You know, three things later, they're crying with their head. You know, going outside, all red, you know. Oh, you were right, man. <laughs> well, can I have another one? You know? So, so you know, that's, you got to be careful with some of that stuff. What are your hours? During the weekend, we're open 24 hours. And during the week, we open at 6.30 in the morning. And we close at 2 in the morning during the week. Yeah, so anybody's out 1 o'clock in the morning causing trouble, you want to come and see me, I'm there. No, no, I will be there, probably not. But we're all open, especially on the weekend, 24 hours. So if you guys need to even if you're not causing trouble. Yeah, even if you're not causing trouble. Well, more, more than likely, you'll, you'll be eating with police officers. That's the only people that are up that, <laughs> that night. So you don't want to be causing trouble at that time. You want to be good. So, okay guys, any other questions? I mean, did I fill it up? Or what page? Thank you. Check them out on Facebook, Twitter.